Hello everybody, welcome to the Nexus Gaming Series. I apologize, I had a little bit of a blip there in the stream. We are already in draft here for Hand Hello. Banana versus Let Project D. Begin. Uh, we do have the delay on the stream, but it should be coming back up in just a couple of moments. So we'll just hop right on into the draft for you guys here. I apologize for the technical issues. I'm something going on tonight. I also can't seem to get my webcam working, but either way, we've got uh, Hand Banana versus Project XD. Uh, Thrall, the first pick up here for Hand Banana, Stukov and Diablo in response, and the Medivh coming out here for Hand Banana. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the C East Division, Hand Banana currently the number two seed Project XD in a three-way tie for seventh seed. They ended up with that seventh seed off of the tiebreakers. So we will see them going up against Hand Banana here. Meanwhile, uh, for the picks and bans phase, we did have Hand Banana with the uh, top-seeded first ban of Sky Temple. Well, Sky of Foundry bound, uh, or, uh, banned out by Project D. And then Battlefield of Eternity was selected by Project D because Hand Banana deferred the map pick uh, in favor of the first pick. So uh, I think I got you guys all caught up now. Again, I apologize for the technical issues. I do have Stitches and Maya being banned out here. So right away, both teams electing to ban out some really high race potential. Uh, Greymane being left alone for right now though. Heavy race potential here on Battlefield of Eternity. But um, good sustained support on both sides to be able to constantly be able to contest these map objectives. So we will have to see. And I do want to make sure that we are indeed live. Yep, it looks like after the stream we did get it up. Okay, we're good. Alright. So now uh, Lunara being picked up here for Project XD. So uh, the newly reworked Lunara. Definitely one of the better race potential heroes in the game. Uh, at level 4 now gets that Nature's Calling to get the extra damage onto non-heroic targets. So it makes her an incredibly strong race hero, as does Artanis with the amateur opponent at level 1. So Project XD grabbing a couple of heroes that are good right off the bat from that first Immortal spawn. Which is pretty exciting. Li Ming and Anubarak can be picked up. So these two heroes often picked in pairs. Because they do a nice job of countering each other. Li Ming with Disintegrate can blow up the Cocoon from Anubarak. Anubarak's Beetles and Spell Shield mechanics often make him a good counter to Li Ming and all of her abilities. So picking them together makes sure that neither of them get countered on your team. Uh, so that's I think that's very clever of Hand Banana here. And uh, that paired with the Mediv and the Thrall, it's going to be a lot of protection... A lot of damage, a lot of sustained healing, also with the Malfurion. I really like this comp from Hand Banana. The only thing that they're missing is the fact that they are just, like, even against just the four that Project D have right now, they're getting destroyed in the race potential. So, um, and that, they, uh, that's before Project XD picks their, uh, pro what I would assume is a second damage dealer. So, the side of Hand Banana is going to have to be very patient here. And they're going to have to work on the concept of trying to defend and get kills and then slowly work your way back. And so Gul'dan, also going to be picked up. That's a very interesting pick for Project XD. Um, it, it pairs it pairs interesting with the Lunara because they're both uh, poison damage. So you can put a lot of long-term pressure on Hand Banana, but it doesn't give you a lot of kill potential. Artanis is going to be your main... Uh, kill potential on the front line to try to track down some of these heroes that are being poisoned and slowed by Lunara and a ton of poison damage also from Gul'dan. But at the end of the day, uh, Malfurion with his sort of sustained style healing is not the worst one to have to deal with this poison damage. Lucio may be a little bit more powerful in that right with, uh, with his constant heals. But Malfurion also kind of has that same mechanic, so we'll have to see. Overall, I like I like the draft from Hand Banana, but I love the race potential and the long term. Oh, and I
I think I have a typo on screen. Give me just one second. Because I don't think that's a Y. I don't think that's supposed to be a Y. I don't see why it would be project. It is project. I take it back. Project XG. They got me. They got me with the J. I'm just so used to seeing J's. What can I say? Assuming that that Project XD wins, I'll have to ask them about the why. All right. Where are we going, camera? Where are we going? All right, well, let's get on, on into this game number one. CE's Division Playoffs on the left, your second seed, Hand Banana. We're going to have Ray on the Anubarak. Um, Malthanius is going to be on the Thrall. Mosher is going to be on the Malfurion. Up in the skies, uh, on that Medivh, we have Draco. And uh, who did I miss? We got Matthias. Um... Sammy Reich, or, or Sammy Ike on the Li Ming. Meanwhile, on the right, Project XD, we've got um, Aviato on the Lunara, Icarus on the Diablo, CG Apocalypse on the Goldan, um, Goldanian on the Sukov, and we're going to have ADN on the Artanis. All right, we do have uh, what we would expect in the solo lane on top. Brawl and Artanis gonna be going back and forth at it. An interesting matchup. Both of them have good self-sustained mechanics, but Matthew's showing off a little bit early, even a little bit of a beast step there. Gonna get the early advantage and the early kill. That's so gonna give a nice little XP boost to the members of Pan Banana. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, the poison damage mechanic long term does favor Project XD in terms of being able to win the sustained laning game. But we'll see if that does indeed end up being how this matchup plays out. Right now, they're doing a nice job of slowly whittling the XP down, but uh, both teams have a very good sustained healer um, that are that are fairly mana efficient, especially the, the Sukov struggles a little bit before one good spread comes into play at level four, but um, nice job by Sammy over here, getting some nice damage out, and the huge chunk! Nubarak in there to finish, but uh, most of the heavy lifting done by Sammy once again. And the Gul'dan just staying a little bit too long, uh, picking that fight with Li Ming. And you see the instant rotation down here by Hand Banana. They're going to be going right after this camp after getting that win. Meanwhile, ADN still struggling up in the top lane against this Thrall. And uh, we do see a little bit of a variation there. Rolling Thunder at level 1. Interesting pick. Uh... You don't. You obviously don't see a lot of crash lightning in the solo lane. And while we do have Medivh scouting over here, that uh, the members of Project XD are indeed over here, grabbing the camp. But both teams rotating out to get their respective shaman camps. Spear throwers are heading on into bot lane, so that's something that Goldan is down here to answer to. I imagine will stay until this is cleared up. Level four talents coming in, and uh, this, this again, this is exactly where um, you do start to see nature's calling, amateur opponent. These early, these early uh, PVE talents of Project XD are going to make it easy for them to rip this apart. The one thing about the Lunara race potential, though, is it's not upfront damage; it's all that poison ticking damage. So um, it sometimes it takes a little bit to come in, 
But you can see they are chunking a huge swap on the Mosher as well as ADN looking to try and make a play, but no follow up available. Most of the damage from Project is coming on into the Immortal, um, but with good reason. You know, they get that poison damage out. They've almost got the 50% proc at this point. We do have a quick pause. Go ahead and bring it on back. Looks like uh, we got a couple teams having some lag. We got a couple members having some lag issues. So we'll get that uh, sorted out for you guys and be back in just a few moments. All right, looks like we are back and ready to go. So uh, they do a nice job of zoning here for Hand Banana. They are able to push the members of XD back to get some nice uh, race onto it themselves. Huge swap in by ADN as they are gonna try and get back in to contest, but right now it is Hand Banana that has the lead. And it looks like both teams are gonna be content to race, uh, though Medivh is starting to head over, but now uh, is gonna recommit but the race potential, I think, is just too strong for XD here. They are going to end up chewing apart this Immortal. And even with the lead, they're going to be able to turn that around and take the first Immortal win. Oh, and that swap so close for ADN. We're all almost getting swapped right into the middle of XD. Meanwhile, we will have the first Immortal spawning in the bot lane here. Not much to go on in the way of shields here for this Immortal. He will hit the ground very early in this uh, offensive assault. But meanwhile, first of the uh, two cannons have gone down off the front wall. And it is setting its sights on the second. We'll be able to chunk a little bit off the fort here. But it's a nice defense overall from Hand Banana. Not overextending. Taking down the Immortal. And this is not going to get too much in the way of advantage for pro Project XD. Is that all? Have not seen the end of him. And for right now, it looks like a four-man commitment to the top lane. As, uh, the members of XD looking to grab themselves an early camp here to start off the second laning phase. We're going to see ADN scouting in the bot lane, so um, Cryag deciding to change it up. They don't want to uh, leave the current laning situation as it is. ADN struggling with Thrall up in the top lane. So I like this call. They're going to try and change it up and, and force the members of Hand Banana to respond. And it uh, looks like they are taking the bait. They are going to send three members to top and leave Medivh down here in the bot lane. So this is overall definitely a win for Cryag as uh, the charge in on the Ray. Still trying to get in there to set something up onto the Goldan. But for right now, they will have to back off the pressure starting to build. Splintered Spear is the choice at level 7 for Aviato. Standard build so far on the new uh, Lunara. Nine corruption stacks so far for Apocalypse. Uh, Calamity build coming in for Sammy. So not looking so much for the race potential build, but instead looking for the more standard teamfight oriented build. 
And 19 stacks so far for the um, Master's Touch for Mediv. That's a pretty good start. And seven seconds left before the Immortal spawn as the camp comes up. Very nice timing for Project, and they'll be able to pick this up before too much starts to happen. I like Icarus with the charge in over the wall to escape the members of Hand Banana. That's uh, That was a pretty nifty move. And for right now, it looks like we are going to have both teams content to go ahead and race. So where you might see uh, a more standard strategy of defending uh, that's going out the window this game as both teams content to race. But again, pretty heavily won there by Project XD. And once again, these Immortals spawning um, on the opposite side, the offensive sides, if you will. Nice force of will getting Mathis out of that situation where he would have taken a ton of damage otherwise, but Anubarak not so lucky, not able to get through that portal out, and now it looks like Project is going to be reaping the benefits by taking out this Immortal. They also have the uh, Shaman still pushing in top lane to start chipping away a little bit at the fort, but um, for right now, that is going to be the second Immortal going over to Project. This one going to have a little bit bigger of a, of a shield, and we'll be going into this top lane, which at this point has actually taken more damage than the bot lane, but that's uh, that's after the Immortal had already started spawning, so kind of a lucky break there for Project. Level 10s are also in. Icarus popping the APOC, trying to get something going, but now taking a ton of damage in response, but a huge root there in the silence. Just like that, that is uh, that is a rough moment. That hurts. Crawl goes down, and now the full five-man commitment. There's also a huge wave building up in bot that's going to get some nice damage onto the bot for it. But right now, this keep is under assault. Front wall is down, and now the Immortal going to set its sights on the well of all things before waltzing over and starting to slap and down the keep. Sunder does come out on the other side, though. Level 10s are in for Hand Banana. The Polybomb coming out. Going to zone them away. They do get the kill onto the Artanis, but now the Web Wrap onto Stukov and the members of Project. No love for the Stukov. They really, realistically, couldn't do anything to save them there. The three members going to rotate away. It's a nice response from Hand Banana. They do manage to defend the keep, and they will be able to recover. They get back some of that um, some of that XP as well. However, one thing I did not note, that was a massive pick onto the Medivh that resets the Master's Touch stacks, which at this point in the game, it's it's pretty difficult to, uh, to build those back up. You only get the uh, big team fights in situations where you kind of got to step up with Medivh into the danger zone, where um, you, end up getting, you end up getting rooted and CC'd and... Uh, Especially in that silence, he's not able to force a will himself or portal out. It can be very rough for the uh, for the for um, the Medivh player to really be able to, to live through that kind of situation. Got Pope coming in here from XD. Web Wrap coming out, and they're trying to engage past it onto the Lunara. They're spreading that polybomb a little bit, but they do manage to get Aviato out. We'll be able to heal him back up, so that's web wrap down for another 40 seconds as this immortal phase is about to come back up. ADN still having a difficult time with Matthias up here. Of course, the spear throwers, I'm sure, are not helping much. And it looks like for right now, the members of Hand Banana are going to look to just defend, focus on the map objective. Members of Project looking to get that 13. They will pick up that 13 talent here and now are going to be ready for a fight the portal in they have scouted that the members of project are on this camp the sunder comes out adn getting very low on the front end there but all this damage coming out from the poison damage dealers of project xd and they're going to get the Li ming down web wrap on the lunara just to just to stop her advance really and that is a massive pick there very aggressive Move by Hand Banana down the talent tier, and Project made him pay for it. The seventh seed showing up in this map number one. 
And they are going directly onto the Immortal. They also have this Shaman Camp uh, going in top. So right now, Hand Banana uh, having all they can deal with and more on Battlefield of Eternity. And uh, this is has the potential makings of a full shield and immortal if they can secure this. Still down the 13 talent here. The shove, the swap, the overpower. Mathis is being ragdolled around here, but the damage comes back onto Diablo. He's going to be taken down. Ray getting a little bit low, going to have to back out of the situation. ADN is deep in there, but a nice swipe there from Goldanian to get him out. Ray getting very low. Aviato trying to make something happen, but all alone up here. Can't do it by himself. But in the meantime, the Shaman Camp gets the keep. Ah, oh, this is disaster mode for Hand Banana. Meanwhile, uh, the, the members of Project XD just back up. They get the Diablo back, uh, albeit without souls. But uh, they come back in, they get the poison damage out, and that is the Immortal. Doesn't matter what happens in the team fight now, the Immortal is down. Uh, but the resets are on here as Sammy popping off, getting a couple of kills. They're gonna have to back up though. Right now, the key, the core is under core assault. Is under Will be cleaned up though by the uh, core shots. The first of what should be multiple catapults spawning in the top lane, starting to march its way towards the core now. Made it about halfway. Full shield and immortal already being chipped away at by Hand Banana, but they do not have a whole lot of counter siege. Most of it's going to come from uh, Thrall and the Li Ming, but uh, the other members just don't really give that much, to be honest. The Mediv um, is pretty bad at anti sieging, and uh, unless there are heroes in the vicinity that he can also clip with that uh, Q while he's trying to do the siege damage. Of course, at level 20, he's got decent wave clear if he goes with the Tyrus Fall. But uh, members of Project XD are here. Looking to try and get something out of this, but without level 16, this is a very risky end gauge. And uh, once again, nice isolation and uh, the kill coming out here from Hand Banana. They're looking for more. They find the Stukov and Project overstaying. Hand Banana gonna go ahead and punish them. ADN trying to swap out, but instead just puts himself in harm's way. That's one of those uh, swaps that I'm sure ADN wishes he could have back. And while uh, two catapults with a third marching on in towards the top, Matthias is here to clean this up, however. Camp being grabbed in the bot lane for Hand Banana. 16 stacks now for Draco on that Medivh. We're looking to try and restack that up to 40. Gonna really enable the team fighting capabilities of Hand Banana once he's got that finish, if he can avoid dying once again. But I gotta say, this has been a very impressive comeback so far for Hand Banana. They have now picked up the 16. They're sieging in with this uh, siege camp to the bot lane. And with the Immortal spawning, Level 16 still not here yet for Project XD. This is really one of those, one of the first times I felt like Hand Banana has come into one of these map objectives with an advantage. But once again, great macro play from Project. They're going to stall the Shaman Camp and cap it as late as possible. So it really forces Hand Banana to have to choose between committing to clearing the top lane and committing to the map objectives in the mid lane to try and get these immortals. So. We'll have to see what their decision is. Granted, that, uh, that Shaman Camp's got a long way to go, but there's a mess of stuff in the top lane that Hand Banana's gonna have to worry about sooner or later, but the Immortal Stun coming down onto Icarus. He charges in, but gets completely blown up. Resets now coming in for Hand Banana. This is the opportunity they were looking for. If they can get a quick team fight win, they can get back to clear and be uh, none the worse for wear. They also have a Shaman Camp pushing in the bot lane. That uh, is not going to get a whole lot of work done. They're going to elect to send the Thrall back and continue to defend. Which I think is a pretty good call. But uh, in response, Project is going to defend their own lane down here. And they've got so much wave clear. And 
his hand banana have started the siege up on to this immortal. Ray gonna burrow charge out as uh, we do see the members coming on back in to the bot lane and they will reassume their defensive positions up here. Aviato though, putting out a little bit of poison damage. We do see Let Them Wither and Unfair Advantage, which is the build you would expect. It's a new kind of heavy poison slow build. But we do see the swap coming in onto Matthias. He's getting a little bit low, but gets a nice heal from Mosher. He's getting a little bit more healthy. Icarus, ADN, and Aviato all very low for the men members of Project. And there is the first reset. Sammy. Trying to get the resets, but cannot get a second for the domination healing. Just like that, it's a one for one with Ray so low. Aviato is low. And the huge Twilight coming in from Mosher. Kind of silence and takes them out. And that is a one for five exchange. They do give up the Li Ming, but they will take that trade. Now they can look to get this immortal. They'll spawn the halftime show here in the mid. And we'll see them go out. Uh, this is a this is an interesting spawn. Um, Matthias is going to get right on this. But the the death timers are not super long. Anubarak having to go back to defend. And I don't know if Hand Banana has enough actual damage to be able to take this out right away. Um, they actually throw out the blinds here from Artanis to try and stall it. Uh, it looks like the members, the, the death timers, may be just long enough. The stalls are in. Wait, I take it back, actually. Icarus dives in, pushes Matthias back. One more orb is going to come in, but uh, still about 2,000 health on this immortal. This is not over. And now Project is going to start to step up, put a little bit of damage onto this immortal. Apoc coming in, trying to get something going, but no follow-up once again to the Apoc. Aviato is in trouble, though. And he is going to go down. The reset's coming in now for the members of Handman. We do see Icarus also going to end up falling. And now and Banana pushing forward. They will be able to get the Immortal spawn. Once again, they'll be able to back up and clear what is a constantly pushing top lane. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about it here. When was the last time Project got any XP from this top lane? It's constantly pushing in with the catapult pressure. They got it so early. This is definitely an XP advantage for Hand Banana. I, I would bet mostly due to that top lane. Though the 18 kills is probably also a factor. Now that I think about it. Oh, meanwhile the dive in from Hand Banana. Gold Danion going to have to pop the, the, the flailing swipe to get Apocalypse out of there. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Big Wave has amassed. ADN looking to try to take that out, try to get them closer to 20. Hand Banana going to be sieging in here with their Immortal. Shields are gone, but it is starting to siege in the keep. They are looking to even out this top lane. Ray diving in. Ton of damage onto Goldanion. They're looking for the reset. Icarus gets a big heal, though. But he dives back in at half health. Definitely playing on the dangerous side, but look at Hand Banana, the discipline. They got the keep, that's what they were looking for. And they're just gonna walk away. They portal out, they're gonna go look at getting camps, and they're gonna play this the slow, methodical way, the safe way. I really like it. You know, the odds of them ending there, even with a level 20, are pretty low. They'd have to get some kills for sure. This is definitely the safe play. They have the 20. They don't need to give those kills and that extra XP up to Project or Project XD. Oh, and Diablo getting caught out there. Huge pick for Hand Banana. Now they can maybe look at trying to go in and uh, get some more work done in the top lane. But it looks like for right now they're going to be content to split out, get some more camp pressure, and just continue to force Project XD back to where they can't safely soak this level 20. Is that all? Yeah, I would say pretty standard picks across the board uh, at the level 20 mark here for Hand Banana. 
Nothing that shocks me too much. It is going to be the Lunar Shower coming out from Mosher. Level 10 always a bit of a question mark for Malfurion players. Do you do you want that, that teleport into Twilight? It can be a big playmaker, but it, all, it can also be big problems at, at some point. Well, Danian with the silence trying to force the members to hand Banana back. Plenty of poison damage as the uh, counter, but uh-oh, ADN's in trouble. Matthias going in with the with the blink, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a reset. Matthias did most of the heavy lifting on that one, but Sammy comes in for the kill steal. Meanwhile, the members of Hand Banana are here, looking to get this immortal. Ray with a nice anchoring position. Trying to slow Project from being able to come in to defend. But without level 20, this this would be an incredibly dangerous defense anyway. They are going to rotate out to lane and try and get close to that. But uh, they still have a very long road to pick up that 20 talent tier. And Hand Banana knows that. They know that they're going to want to force Icarus. Gets double stun, triple stun, rooted, and completely blown up. Well, wait. Now completely blown up. I, I thought that damage was coming in for sure. They ended up a little bit of a stall there, but they get the kill once again. And now this will be free immortal time. Aviato actually coming in to put a little bit of damage down, but Ray says nope. Web wrap comes out. We're gonna push him back. It's gonna allow the members of Hand Banana to get this complete. Is that all? They get the camp back, right? No, no, they're not going for the camp. Okay. The light of the crystal arch shines. Could have had that shaman pushing in with the bot on this push, but we do have uh, both lanes push out pretty far for Project, and they are actually stalking around, more looking for the early siege damage than uh, looking to push the minion wave in. This is a pretty interesting rotation, ADN. Going in the top, almost as if this is a base race call. Or maybe just trying to soak the additional XP. Either way, Immortal Sieging and Bot. Now they are going to need their Artanis back. I don't know that they can pick up... The, well, they actually do get the level 20. Artanis does soak it in the top lane, but now the keep is falling. It's still half shield on this Immortal as it sets its sights on the core. And this is Hand Banana's opportunity to finish off what would be an incredible comeback. The big root from Matthias. He gets Aviato on the back end of this. The fear comes out just a little bit too late to try and save the deer. Meanwhile, the uh, Immortal is chipping away at the core. 70% down already. And that is it. Hand Banana is going to take game one here on Battlefield of Eternity. Starting off the series strong. For the top seed. What a comeback. You know, Project had the early the early game. They had the damage on the Immortals to be able to pick up the first couple map objectives. They come out and they play really strong. But then uh Pri but then Hand Banana, they they stayed true to their comp. Their comp was not about immortal race, it was all about team fighting. And you can see 22 to 4. They got lots of kills, lots of picks in the late games. They got the late map objectives, which is where it really counts. They survived in the game long enough to weather the storm of the early game power of Project XD's pomp. And they were able to win it in the late game. Oof. Give you guys a little picture of the talents, what these guys were building throughout that game number one. And then off we shall go. I have to get the map picks in here real quick from uh so so first of all project now will have the opportunity to either pick first pick or map pick so we'll uh contact aviato and see what they want here
All right, so it looks like we are going to Infernal Shrines for game number two. So of course, Infernal Shrines, another Diablo-themed map. This one, though, more based on your wave clear potential, the shrine clearing opportunities that you can get. It looks like we got both teams in. And we got both teams ready to go. We're going to head on in to game number two. Infernal, Infernal Shrines. Shrines is going to be the pick here. Let's give Hand Banana their win. And we'll uh, get the map up here. I think actually the map already is set to Infernal Shrines because that's what everybody's been playing lately. What do you know? Bobo says hi, everybody. I thought to myself, well, if you're just sitting around an NGS chat, you really ought to just come in. But he's in an unranked match, so no Bobo co-caster today. Maybe later. So Infernal Shrines, you see a lot of Sonya here as uh, one of the main shrine clearers. A heavy priority on sustain as well as the wave clear factor. You can get a lot of sustained damage and or sustained healing to keep you in these fights for a very long time. Uh, interesting ban outs to start though. We got Bromi for the members of Project XD. And meanwhile, Hand Banana Choosing to ban out the Medi or the Maya. I was about to say Mediv, but there he is once again for Hand Banana. So uh, Kalthos being picked up for Project. Very horde. good wave clear and shrine clear. And Mediv and Thrall coming in on the other side. So uh, Hand Banana not really wanting to make any adjustments. I think they were just fine with how that game number one went, and I can't blame them. Played incredibly well. Especially in the back half. Project, though, making some major adjustments. They're going to go with the... Kel well, and also, Project XD's draft was incredibly map-oriented. They they picked specifically for the race potential. And that, that did win them the early game, but uh, that just wasn't quite enough to execute late game. Kael'thas and Johanna, though, also very map-specific picks. You don't see Kael'thas... A whole lot in the game right now he's not he's not super meta but he is very map specific meta here on infernal shrines we occasionally see him on tomb of the spider queen basically anywhere where you just want a ton of wave clear and johanna kind of the same she brings a lot of wave clear for a tank and so uh this will be picked up here stukov also has a little bit extra value on this map of course you love the sustained healing you really love to see it as my friend murda would say but uh, the silence also 
you can put down in the entry and exit ways of these shrine areas. And it can be very, very... Uh, it can be very uh, influential in terms of whether or not you can get uh, in or out of these shrine areas safely. So we will end up seeing Hand Banana with the ban. They are going to take out Blaze. Um, gotta wonder if if Thrall is still going to be their solo laner. Thrall, of course, a pretty versatile hero. Uh, couple different level 1 talent builds that you can start based on whether or not you're going to throw him in the solo lane. I don't think it would necessarily be terrible for them to still pick another solo laner like a Sonya. But uh, we'll have to see what exactly they want to do. We did see them play the Anubarak to great effect in the last game. The hunt is on. So they are going to pick up the Lunara this time around. So, And the Deckard, which is very interesting. Deckard, of course, another hero that uh, is very good at sustaining, but also good at setup. When you look at these shrine areas... Uh, some of the heroes that stand out as good shrine fighters are the, the heroes that can come and set up beforehand. So, uh, such as the Gazlo or the, um, the Probius, which are not very meta heroes, but on these maps where you want to set up for a specific objective, if you show up a little bit early, you can get a nice advantage there. Deckard, who is, of course, is new into the game, is another one of those heroes that you can get a lot of value off of just from showing up a little bit early and setting up your potions to be able to really affect the team fight later. But uh, Lunara, also very good sustained damage. Is countered a little bit by what Stukov brings to the table healing-wise. Um, but overall, it's just it's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure on that constant poison ticking damage. That uh, you almost feel like there's a timer on how long you can stay in the fight. But Cassia and Ragnaros being picked up here, so... A ton of wave clear from Project XD. We've seen a lot of Ragnaroses going with the um, going with the lava wave to have the off lane soaking pressure and the extra um, and the extra siege damage that you get from pushing those minion waves in and the off lanes. And of course, Molten Core can be very very solid for defending. A uh, enemy Punisher. Speaking of Punishers, Garrosh coming on in. So, uh, good CC follow-up. The, Of course, the potential for the follow-up stun from Thrall. Or follow-up roots, I should say, from Thrall and Deckard. They don't have a ton of follow-up damage. The Lunara, of course, does have the slow that you can also apply to try and keep somebody in once they've been tossed and isolated. So that can be pretty strong. All right, so we are loading in here to Infernal Shrines for game number two. I want to thank everybody for coming out today, watching these teams put on a good show for us. Do remember to hit that follow button, come back for some more NGS action. Constantly picking up matches to cast. We'll see if I can uh, pick up anything next week. Barely any of the matches have been scheduled for the round of eight in uh, all these different divisions, but as soon as they pop up, I'll look to see if I can pick Prepare any up. But either way, on into game number two we go. On the left, Hand Banana looking to close this out 2-0 and move on with the rest of their Saturday. We got Ray on the Garrosh. Mosher is going to be playing the Deckard. Kane. Matthias on the Thrall. Sammy is going to be on the Lunara. And up in the skies, we've got Draco once again on the Mediv. On the right, Project XD, CG Apocalypse, going to be playing the Kael'thas. 
CG Sans Roy is going to be on the uh, Johanna. Aviato on the Cassia. And we're going to have Goldanian on the Stukov. And ADN going to be playing Rag. All right. So both these teams rotating in towards the mid. Give you guys and uh, take a look at these talents. So we do have the uh, Flame Strike build coming in here. Convection from Apocalypse. So he's going to be looking to enhance that Flame Strike damage, get a little bit of extra wave clear potential. Not really looking for the uh, survivability potential for Mana Addict. So uh, does, he doesn't feel like he's going to be in too much trouble, which makes sense. It's a pretty strong frontline game. Usually you'll see Cassia, the one uh, being pressured before it's the Kalthos that's under duress. Mosher just playing safe, soaking here in the mid. But the rotation game is on for Project. Uh, watch out in the top, you got a couple of uh, couple of orcs ready to try to take on ADN. Ray charging in, gets the Groundbreaker, but does not get in range for the toss. So ADN able to survive there. Matthias with a nice route to try to set that up, but just not quite in time. Meanwhile, rotation game continuing here in the bot lane. Five stacks so far for Medivh. Slowly starting to bring up that Master's Touch. Only one so far on Convection for Apocalypse, but right now the members of Hand Banana are just playing incredibly passive, which I think is a great call. You know, they don't really need to fight here early. The only thing you really need in these early laning phases is just to try to make sure you're getting as much XP as possible. We do have the uh, the portal in, though. Ray able to get in and get the toss. Project is going to back away from this camp and give it over to Hand Banana. Project looking to try and make something happen here in the bot lane. Aviato taking a little bit of damage on the back end, but uh, for right now, the members of Hand Banana not really looking for picks. They're looking to rotate up. They've got a massive wave built up here in the mid. I'm gonna get some X, some XP from it as they uh, rotate up. So this is something that Project is likely to want to clear. They're actually missing a ton of XP soak. Just, uh, just up the road there in the mid lane. Aviator will rotate to it. Right now, Hand Banana rotating very early to this shrine. And once again, you, you see the potions already going out. Now AD into trouble. The body blocks from Ray are real. And that is going to be first blood going over to Hand Banana. Ouch. And just like that, I think Project has decided that they do not want this early uh, Punisher. Draco rotating the mid, gonna clear out this mid camp ever so slowly. Looks like he will be side soaking for the members of Hand Banana. I see Hand Banana leaving this at 39. They're gonna stall it up, wait for Medivh to come back, and it looks like they are gonna commit to the full five man push. Meanwhile, Project leaving Cassia down to dual soak. And just the one, the one spear thrower left down here. Gonna keep the lane pressured, if nothing else. Level sevens are now in for Hand Banana as they take down the front wall. John Cena does jump, but it's Johanna that that soaked up that jump. Molten Core gonna come out. ADN looking to try and pressure them back a bit, but he is getting completely chewed up on that Molten Core. Now uh, Johanna caught out a little bit, but the Iron Skin will be popped. Jump in from John Cena, not very effective. But uh, Fort is going to end up going down here with all this pressure from Hand Banana. And they're looking to actually get more with the portal in. The toss onto CG Apocalypse. 
Look out, and that's going to be a reset onto the uh, convection stacks. He does get three after the death goes down, but still. That's, uh, that hurts. Meanwhile, you've got your Mediv now at 12 stacks. Not a whole lot of fighting going on, so he hasn't been able to stack that up much, but he is all the while still staying alive, which is really the important part with these death mechanic quests. Look at some of the other quests. Uh, 12 and 4 right now for ADN on the Ragnaros, so he's uh, making some slow progress towards those early quests. Ground Breaker at 7 so far for Ray, who is under a lot of pressure. Nice force of will coming out, though, from Draco. And they're going to actually charge back in. They're, uh, Ray looking to make something happen. The toss does go down on jo into Johanna. The Iron Skin popped to start to back up. Sammy flanking from the bot end, but Ragnaros falls up in the top lane. And once again, Matthias playing strong in the solo game. Getting the better of that solo lane matchup for sure. Sammy rotating to the bot. Gonna just skip past that giant wave and go straight onto the camp. Level 10's very close in here. Oh, and Matthias has gotta be careful. There is an entire crew of people looking to gank him, but a uh, little B-step on his way out there. Yeah, I, I thought for sure that was gonna be gank city for Project, but they just not quite able to slow his advance out. We're all popping that wind fury. He's definitely been not skipping the gym on leg day. Jason has clearly not watched Silicon Valley. You know, you're, you're definitely right about that, Axon. You called that one out right. Meanwhile, uh, Ragnaros falling in the bot lane here. Poison damage from Lunara doing him in. Level 10's coming in soon for Project. Stay a while and listen. Got to be the choice for Mosher this game. The will As will once again be the Polybomb. Coming in from Draco. By the way, if, it's, if it is Draco, then I apologize, but... Draco just sounds so much cooler. Aviato, meanwhile, being tossed, taunted, poisoned, and killed. Youch. Moshers, and once again, arriving early to set up these potions. And right now, Hand Banana is in the driver's seat. Getting the job done. About a level and a half lead right now. Or no, about a full level lead. Caster map. Real good. Camp was picked up in top, getting a little bit of work done on this front wall. Project will be looking to clear that up and get the camp of their own in top lane. But Draco is here to uh, scout this out. We'll have to see if uh, the members of Hand Banana want to try to come in on this. There's a quick portal, and they could be here, but they are going to just go ahead and settle for pushing in the mid lane with the Punisher. This is a frozen Punisher, so it uh, doesn't offer quite the damage, but does offer a little bit of extra CC slash area denial. It's going to be difficult to play around. And uh, ADN popping the Molten Core, and the members of Hand Banana popping the Molten Core as well, popping it right out of existence. Taunt going in, the Punisher and Cassia gets just absolutely deleted. I think there was an error in the game where Cassia existed for a few seconds, but that has been corrected. She no longer exists on the map. So the, she may respawn soon. Meanwhile, Fort goes down. A little bit of damage on the wall. Members of Project are here to uh, clear out the bot lane while the top lane is pushing. And Banana going to send up Thrall. 
to clean that up. Oh, ADN gets tossed out. And right now, Ray doing a nice job of getting the isolated powers of Garrosh out into the world. No follow-up that time, but uh, overall, he's done some nice tosses. Groundbreaker just barely missing there. A nice unstoppable pop, just completely juking. Without without even without uh, walking, I don't know how you juke while you walk straight, but Ray did it there. That Valkyrie, not getting the value desired. You're welcome, Seventh. No problem, buddy. I don't usually have Saturdays off, but you know I knew I asked this one off for a reason. I just didn't know what it was until today, when, uh, when the game needed to be cast. So here I am. We got it. We got it, team. Ah, oh, the poor Wisp. I never had a chance. Mean old tower. Level 13 is in now for Hand Banana. They've got the, they've got the uh, talent tier advantage for a few more seconds. Looking to get a little extra siege out. Greater potions have been picked up here by by uh, Mosher. ADN just kind of passive soaking in the mid. Not wanting to show and incur the wrath and the rotations of Hand Banana once again. And look at Ray going in deep after the Stukov. Huge Sunder coming in from Mathis. The two man route to follow it up. The triangle route and the stale while. And Hand Banana coming in with the CC. The body blocks from Mathias. Going to take Cassia out. And. Right now, Hand Banana is just rolling, making the plays, showing us why they're the number two seed here in Div C East, and they are slowly but surely punching their ticket to that top four. Holy cow. And now, once again, Mosher are going to be here nice and early to start to set up these potions. Project XD has a little bit of a window here where they are on the same talent tier before the level 16s come in for hand banana and they're looking to force but it's once again ray with the toss the taunt the poly bomb the poison Whew. that's a quick pick and level 16 gonna come shortly after for right now hand banana more looking to just soak Bunnykins 921 thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the J-Baited Club. I think I also had one earlier. I don't have my stream labels up. I'll have to bring that up real quick. Let's see, who the heck was that who followed me earlier? Getting close to that 400. Ikaru Gusa. Also, thank you for the follow earlier. If you're still watching, I still appreciate it. Front wall being pressured here by Hand Banana. They pick up the Mortar Punisher. Oh, and the toss in once again onto ADN. Ray doing a nice job getting that priority target. And the Sheeps are real. Four men split onto that polybomb. Woo! Again. They get two of the highest priority targets. Now they're getting the Joe isolated. Iron Skin has popped, but I think it might be too late to get them out of this situation. Didn't even need the triangle, and just like that, Hand Banana strutting their way on into the core. GG's are going to be called. Stay a while and listen. Just use this as a zoning tool at this point. And that is it. Game number two and the series going over to Hand Banana. And they will move on to the round of four. <laughs> uh, I apologize. It's Blorf. Uh, let's see. It's Methanius. Yeah. 
I mean, that that's kind of the idea of uh, of like the diva style casting is that it's not that I'm saying it wrong. It's that you pronounce your own name wrong, obviously. Same with Draco or Draco. It's got to be Draco. That sounds cooler. All right. So anyway, congratulations to Hand Banana. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can't reach out to uh, Team Captain Ray. New follower detected. Professor Bobo with the follow. Thank you very much. Like, wait a minute, Bobo, you weren't following me already? What the heck? What the heck, man? I've been following you for a while. That's okay. I still appreciate it. Um, yeah, let's, like I said, let's reach out to Ray. Hello? Hey. Hello, I'm joined by Team Captain for Hand Banana. Ray, ha congratulations on the win. How are you guys feeling after that matchup? Thank you. Uh, we were feeling really good. Um... We, uh, I, I guess we're, uh, we're sorry to see Project go, um, we, we, uh, very friendly competitors with them, but, uh, we, we really appreciate, uh, the time you took to, to cast this game as, as well as their, uh, their amazing performance as well. Yeah, but. definitely, definitely showing up in game number one. That, tell me a little bit about that matchup and how you guys felt after they had taken that early lead, even getting the top keep. Uh, how did you guys come back in that matchup? Uh, a lot of it is just sort of keeping our cool. We we knew that they weren't getting kills on us um, really all that often. Uh, the, the biggest struggle was the early game, as well as the burn they had compared to us. Uh, so all we had to do, we, we knew that we had a team fight comp. We knew that our win condition was to get picks and then burn. So we, once we were able to get alts, like as you saw, whenever they took the keep, as soon as our tens came online, I was able to throw out a cocoon on Stukov. We were able to get like two, three kills off that. And uh, I really feel like once we hit 10, uh, our, our comp really managed to round out and uh, we, we succeeded from there. And one thing I also noticed about your guys' style today is you guys ended up picking double Mediv. Um, so tell me a little bit about uh, Draco and uh, and his Mediv play throughout the series. Uh, Draco's the man. Um, we <laughs> we uh, we've been trying to work on him with more aggressive portals, uh, and a noob works really well with that. Uh, because of the beetles, if you if you throw a portal underneath the fort and then you spawn beetles with a noob, they take the tower shots. You don't, and it's a lot easier to get picks that way. But uh, in game two, you were able to see his his very forward portals, his very uh, that that was able to secure multiple kills. So yeah. he's especially with the Garrosh just constantly going yeah. in, <laughs> tossing people out of spots. So yeah, like if you can regularly put Garrosh right on top of Stukov, you're, you're probably going to see positive dividends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, uh, that was our, that was our main goal with the Medivh, um, to sort of, sort of disrupt, because Medivh is a very disruptive hero. He sort of makes your enemy team play differently because, uh, of, of the portals and the protects. So teams would have to hold on to like long cooldowns if they don't see a protect in the vial. And they also need to play further back because uh, picks with portals happens all the time. Yeah, so you guys also come out and um, you know it's really, really win pretty heavily there in game number two. Um, tell me a little bit about how much you think momentum 
as a factor, and especially in these best of three matchups and how you guys were feeling that was that was really affecting the series? Uh, I think everyone on our team thinks of it differently. Um, personally, I wanted the map pick since at this level, like, uh, you don't scrim regularly on all the maps. You really just sort of play what maps you like most. And I feel like if we if we had the opportunity for map pick and if we had the the chance to like get two maps that we liked and we were comfortable on, then I feel like that would have made our momentum be able to carry throughout the series. But my teammates said, uh, first pick is is pretty better. Uh, uh, pretty better, yeah. First pick is better. Um, we have a comp in mind, so we decided with first pick, and I think that uh, as soon as we started picking up momentum post-10 in game one, we really sort of, I think, secured the series. Uh, All right. Well, one thing I also wanted to ask you guys was uh, just a little bit of background about your team in general, your guys' experience so far in NGS. Is this your guys' first experience in like an amateur gaming series, or uh, just tell me yep, more about is, uh, uh, Hand Banana? Yeah, uh, Hand Banana sort of spawned as like an idea to to play in an amateur league. We initially looked at uh, the EU amateur league which I made a mistake of signing us up for. And then <laughs> and NGS showed up a few weeks later, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, but yeah, Hand Banana, um, Mosher, Sammy, and I, uh, we've been playing since last April with each other on a regular basis. Uh, we sort of know how each other clicks. We, we have the synergy with that. Uh, Malthanius, he... Uh, he was a pickup from, from a friend that we invited and uh he's he's a really solid player he's a uh, safe smart but aggressive at the same time and then draco he is uh he's a member of sammy and my uh world of warcraft guild um and he was like level 86 when we started getting him taught and he was the most passive player in the world but uh you get him on Medivh or you get him on a another hero he likes like butcher and he just really goes at it well, yeah, and then you get the Li Ming with those forward resets. That, uh, yeah. That's some very strong play in uh, game number one. Thank you. All right, so I uh, want to thank you for coming out. But before I let you go, I would be remiss if I didn't roll out the red carpet for you and let you do the shout-outs. So uh, the floor is yours. Uh, first of all, shout-outs to Project. They're, they're a great group of people. Um, I hope that they stick around for next season in NGS. Uh, shout outs to all my friends back at home, uh, Will, Chris, Billy, Isaac, if you guys are watching, you guys are great. Uh, shout outs to anyone in Grand Theft Auto that's watching, anyone that's in the, uh, Flying Bubblegum Hots, uh, Discord. Uh, and shout out to Splorf, that guy is kind of strange, but he supports us, so I have no complaints. <laughs> and then shout out finally to NGS, uh, this has been a wonderful experience for me and all my teammates, and uh, we wouldn't have had this opportunity without you. All right. Well, congratulations once uh, once again on the win. Thank you very much for coming out and putting on a great show for us, and have a good night. Of course. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Well, guys, that's going to do it for me tonight. Thanks, everybody, for coming out and watching. Thanks to the NGS family for all the support. And all the love. I really am feeling it. And uh, thanks to everybody for the follows. We crossed the 400 line. Very exciting. Next step, the 500. We'll get there. We'll get there, team. But uh, that is going to be it for me. For the Nexus Gaming Series, I am Jason. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good night.